we can start the lesson. Good afternoon, everybody. So today we'll be divided into two parts. In the first, I think, hour, half an hour, hour, we will try to develop another exercise in Android together. And we will try to use some other components and in particular broadcast receivers. And then we will move to the Ladispe. I prepared a lab on Android where you will try to develop a simple client for our uh, for the rest the, re the rest server you developed in the last labs. Uh, obviously, you can also work on your projects. It's your choice. Um, but before starting with the new exercise, just a few words about the exercise of the last time, since we had some problems with Android Studio. I already uploaded a, a working version of the exercise on GitHub. So last time we tried to develop a simple calculator. Um, and we started by designing uh, the activities of, of the application. Uh, so activities are components in Android designed for supporting user interaction and they are typically composed of two files. One uh, is the XML file that contains the layout of the user interface and the other one is a Java class containing the logic of the activity. So for example, here in the main uh, activity, we started by designing the layout and so we we defined a parent component, a linear layout, and inside the linear layout we put uh, some widgets. And uh, the key point is that we assigned an ID to all the widgets for which we need a reference in the Java code. So for example, we assigned an ID to this edit text because we want to get the user input from the edit text and we also assigned an ID, for example, to all the buttons because we need to assign a listener uh, to, to each button. And so in the Java class of the activity, we then used the ID to get a reference of the of the widgets and then we used the reference for for example set listeners and for getting uh, the the user input for example and then another important thing about this exercise are intents there are two types of intents explicit and implicit intents for example this is an ex oh, sorry, an explicit intent that we create for, in this case, opening a new activity. So with new intent, we create an explicit intent. We must use the application context and we must reference the class of the activities that we are going to, to open. And then there are implicit intents that are typically listed in the manifest file. The manifest file is a sort of contract between the operating system and the application that lists all the components of the, of the application and all the permissions required to run the application. And this is an example of an implicit intent. So this intent tells Android that the related activity is the launcher activity. So the activity to be opened when the user tap on the application icon. Okay, any questions? Good, we can start with the new exercise. And so, let me, sorry, mirror the screen of my phone. So today we will develop a simple Bluetooth monitor that monitor the status of the Bluetooth. 
so I can turn on and turn off the Bluetooth from the application. So if I click on the switch, I can turn on the Bluetooth of my phone. And I also display some basic information, such as the device name and the Bluetooth address. And I can also turn off the Bluetooth. But more importantly, I can also use the application to mirror the status of the Bluetooth. And so if I turn off the Bluetooth from my settings, the application intercept such an event and dynamically change its its layout. Okay? So let's start from scratch with a new project. Let's call it Android Bluetooth. Next, company domain, it's okay. Android 5. As usual, I select an empty activity because I prefer uh, designing the, the activity from scratch. Main activity, finish. So, while we are waiting, uh, Android Studio, let's recap the Android application structure. Last time we, we have seen activities. Uh, then there are services that are used for, uh, for running in the background to complete uh, long running operations. For example, to download something from the web or to play music while the user is using another application and so on. Then there are content providers that are used to share data between different applications. And then there are broadcast receivers that we will use in our application. Uh, broadcast receivers are components which waits for messages. For example, uh, we, we will use broadcast receiver to wait for the Bluetooth events. Uh, a broadcast receiver uh, doesn't have any graphical user interface, but it can optionally generate notifications in the status bar. Okay. In the application there is a single activity, so let's start with the layout of the activity. And today I will show you how to use, instead of linear layout, how to use uh, relative layouts. So uh, I change this component, constraint layout, that is actually more difficult to be used, into a relative layout. And differently from a um, linear layout that you can use for uh, putting widgets one by line or one by column, in a relative layout, you can put widgets, uh, you can uh, place widgets um, with a position that depends on other widgets. Okay? So you need to assign an, an ID to each widget, and then you can place, for example, the widget uh, X uh, below the widget Y. So let's add. This is the relative layout, so the parent uh, component. Let's add, for example, the switch. Inside the relative layout, so I, I drag and drop it here. Good. I can assign an ID here. Let's call it uh, switch1. And I can also center it. I can center it in, uh, in the entire activity, or I can center it only horizontally. Good. Then I can add some top margin. Top. 
let's say 20 single points. Good. And then there are the components, the widgets used for displaying some basic information about the Bluetooth. So there are one, two, three, four uh, text box. And uh, two text box are actually two labels. Device name and Bluetooth address are fixed. Then there are two text box that are dynamically filled in via code with the device name and the device address. So let's add the first label, text view, inside the relative layout. I define an ID, label name, and now the label is here, but I can specify its position. For example, I can put it below the switch one. So layout below switch one. As you can see, now the label is below the switch. So this is the characteristic of our relative layout. I can center it and I can assign some top margin. 20 single point, and I can also change the text, device name, and I can also change its style. For example, I can put it, oh sorry, bold. Good. Then there is a text box for displaying the device name, I drag and drop it below the label name. I assign an ID, uh, let's call it text name. And as before, I can put it below the, the associated label. I can center it and obviously I, I must delete the text because for now the text box is empty and we will, uh, we will add the device name dynamically via code. Good. And then the same for the second label, so another text view. This is the text view, the label for the address. Now I position it below the text name. I center it and I change the text. And maybe the style. Good, and then the last text view for the device address. Again, I define an ID, uh, text address. I position it below the label, label address, I center it. And as before, I delete the text because also this text box will be dynamically filled in via code. Now, there is another behavior that we can set up in the layout. So as you can see in the application, when the Bluetooth is turned off, that is the default, uh, all the text views are hidden, okay? So, and are displayed only when the Bluetooth is turned on. So by default, we can set the visibility of all the, three, uh, all the four text views to uh, hidden. So there is a field visibility that I, I can set up to gone. 
and this is for all the text box boxes so gone visibility gone and visibility gone okay here we are the design is ready any questions We can move to the main activity <coughs> and as usual the first thing to do is to get a reference to the, the widgets so let's define some variables uh, we will need a reference uh, to the switch of course to assign a listener for the switch events and then also a references to all the text box because uh, we would like to set for example the visibility of the text box when the Bluetooth is turned on. So let's define a variable for the switch. There is a built-in switch class in Android. Let's call it switch Bluetooth. And then four variables for the four text box. Text text view. Uh, so the first one is the label for the device name, label name. The second is the text field for the name. The third one is the text view for the, is the label for the address. And then there is the text view for the address. Good. Then inside the onCreate method, that is the first method of an activity life cycle, I get the reference by using the, the ID. So the switch Bluetooth, I can use the find view by ID that already is a built-in function in Android to get a reference to the widgets. Then I use also the built-in R class to get the list of all the IDs in my application. And so the, IDs, the ID for the switch is switch1. And I repeat the same operation for all the labels. So label name equals to find view by ID r dot id dot label name. The label for the address r dot id dot label address and the two text views. So text name is equals to and the text name for the address. Right? So now we have the references to all the widgets. And we can start by um, adding the listener to the switch for turning on and off the Bluetooth from inside the application. In this case, it's not a non click listener, but is a unchecked change listener so we are intercepting the event of the switch that tells us when the switch changes its position I have to create a new on check change listener and as you can see in the method we can access obviously the switch but also its status right so I can uh, check the status of of the switch and if the switch is checked this means that I need to turn on the Bluetooth right otherwise if 
is not checked. Oh, sorry. If it's not checked, I need to turn off the Bluetooth. Right? So the is checked variable is the new status of the switch. So the status after the user click on the switch. And to turn on the Bluetooth, I can use the Bluetooth adapter. That is, again, another built-in class in Android. From the Bluetooth adapter, I get the default adapter. So I'm accessing the underlying hardware of my phone, and I can enable it. There is a problem. Why there is a problem, in your opinion? Yeah, we are trying to change the status of the hardware of our phone, so we need the permission. Uh, and in particular, we need to add in the manifest file the permission to use the Bluetooth. And to add a permission, uh, actually, there are um, different types of permissions. Some permission uh, requires uh, the user explicitly uh, give the permission. In other cases, for example, for the Bluetooth, you have only to define the permission inside the manifest. I don't remember the permission. Okay, we need to add two permissions. The first one is this one, Android permissions Bluetooth. And the second one is Bluetooth admin. So we are defining the permissions in our manifest file. And as you can see now, okay, no problem. Otherwise, if you try to execute the application without the permission, you will receive an exception. Good. And I can disable the Bluetooth in the else disable. Pretty simple. Any questions? So let's try the application. Run, run. Okay, today we are lucky. Everything seems to work. So now Android Studio is processing our project. Okay, now it's installing the application on the phone. It's really, really slow. Okay, let's continue with the application. We will try again later on. So, there is another thing to do 
at the startup of the application that is setting up the user interface um, depending on the actual uh, Bluetooth state. Okay, now it's working. So let's try. So now there is, uh, there is a problem because the Bluetooth is actually turned on, but my application, uh, the switch is turned off. So we will need to set up at the startup uh, our layout to mirror the actual state of the Bluetooth. But let's try the switch. Okay, the Bluetooth was already turned on. Let's try to turn off the Bluetooth. Yes, it's working. And now the Bluetooth is turned off. Good. So before setting the listener, we can set up the initial state of the switch and of the text boxes. And we can simply use the Bluetooth adapter to, to check the initial status of the Bluetooth. So if the Bluetooth is enabled, we can turn on the switch. I can use the set checked method, true. Then we can set the visibility of all the text boxes to visible. So label name dot set visibility visible. And this is for all the four text boxes. So label address, uh, text name and text address. And we can dynamically fill in these text boxes, and in particular the text name uh, field with some information about the Bluetooth. Again, I use the Bluetooth adapter to get, for example, the name of my device and the address, the Bluetooth address. Right? Otherwise, I set the switch to unchecked, so set checked false, and the text boxes to gone. Right? So let's try the application again. Run. Now the Bluetooth is um, sorry. The Bluetooth is turned off. And okay, the switch also is turned off. If I close the application. I turn on the Bluetooth and I reopen the application. Uh, this one. Yeah, it's working. Now the Bluetooth is turned on and also the switch and all the text boxes are visible. Good. So now we would like to add some more interesting features and we would like the application to automatically react to such an event. So if I turn the Bluetooth off, the application should also turn off the switch and, and so on. So this is uh, the use case of a broadcast receiver. Uh, there are two ways of creating a broadcast receiver. And the first one is to create it from the, the menu offered by Android Studio. So in the new menu and other, yes, broadcast receiver. I can call it Bluetooth receiver, finish. As you can see, a, blot, a broadcast receiver is simply a Java class that extends 
the broadcast receiver built-in class of Android. And there is a single method on receive. And this method is called whenever the broadcast receiver uh, intercept uh, a system event. Now, Android Studio automatically insert the broadcast receiver also in the manifest file. Actually, this broadcast receiver is really generic. We need to specify it to react to some specific event. And for this purpose, we can add an implicit intent to the receiver. For example, here we are saying that this broadcast receiver should be invoked for Bluetooth events. So Bluetooth dot adapter dot action dot state changed. Okay. So we specialized such a broadcast receiver to intercept state changed events on the Bluetooth. And now in the onReceive code, we can implement our logic. We can also check the, the action that must be the one that we inserted in the intent filter. But for security purposes, we can check it. So if action is equals to Bluetooth adapter dot action state changed. And here we can implement our logic. We can also get the new state of the Bluetooth. Let's call it new state. Uh, 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 intent dot get int extra Bluetooth adapter dot extra state and here we can specify a default value minus one so the new state will be probably minus one for Bluetooth turned off and I think plus one for Bluetooth turned on and here we can check the, the new status. If the new state is equals to Bluetooth adapter dot state on. This means that the Bluetooth has been turned on from the system settings. And so I need to, for example, set the switch to checked. Otherwise, if the new state is equals to state off, This means that the Bluetooth has been turned off. But now there is a problem with this solution. Because unfortunately, there is no an easy way to access our activity from this Java class. Because the activity is in a separate class, and we, we don't have any references to the widgets of the activities. So I cannot say switch, I don't remember the variable name. Obviously I cannot say switch, switch Bluetooth dot set check because we don't have any references to the switch uh, for the Bluetooth. So the solution is to avoid the creation, the creation of a new class, but instead we can define this class directly inside the main activity ones. So here I define an inner, maybe private class that models our Bluetooth receiver.
obviously, we cannot use now the manifest to register the, the receiver because if we delete the Java class, Yes, Android Studio automatically delete the references also in the manifest file. So we need to register the receiver dynamically via code. Okay, so in the onCreate method, the last thing to do is to register dynamically the broadcast receiver. So I create a new a new Bluetooth receiver, a new object, Bluetooth receiver of my class. So here I'm creating a new object related to this class. And then I use the built-in function register receiver. to register my Bluetooth, my new Bluetooth receiver and I can also specify the same intent filter of before with a new intent filter Bluetooth adapter sorry dot action state changed okay it's the same of before but we are registering the Bluetooth receiver dynamically via code and in this way, we can have the class in directly inside the activity. And from this method, I can now access all the widgets of my user interface. So here, switch Bluetooth dot set checked. I can copy and paste these lines of codes of code. Yes. And in the other case, copy, paste, and here we are. Let's try, run, run application, okay. Now, the Bluetooth is turned off and also the switch, good. I can turn on the Bluetooth from inside the application. Okay, maybe we forgot something for the device name and the device address. And if I click on the Bluetooth setting, okay, so it's working. The application intercepted the, the event and dynamically changed its layout. So there is a problem maybe with Yes, with the device name and the device address. So maybe we forgot to add. Yes, we set up the text only at startup. We need to copy and paste this operation also when the Bluetooth is turned on. So here and also here right let's try again so I turn on the Bluetooth I turn here we are so now everything seems to work Good. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why couldn't we see those variables if the DVD is actually static? Uh, yes, but this could be an option, but it's not uh, recommended by Android. So everything, every widget should be private inside the activity. Otherwise, for example, from an external application, you could, for example, change your layout. So for security purposes, it's better to have all the widgets private. But it should work also, this, this solution.
Any other questions? So we can stop here the lesson. We can move all together to the LADISPE for the supervised work group and the lab about Android. Thank you for your attention.